Hello and thanks very much for joining me. I'm Dean the Vaping Biker and today we're going to be looking at another offering from Hop and Vape, those guys that gave us the Rashomon RDA that was rather good. Um, this is the Cough or the King of Flavour it's called and um, I've got to say I think it looks great. I think it do really like the way this comes across but uh, yeah before I go into any more let's dive down up close. I'm going to show you the deck and I'm also going to pop in a round wire build because and I'll explain why this is later on. The round wire builds I think are the most challenging to get into one of these little bad boys. Anyway, before any more, let's go down up close and we'll have a little look. Car then. Right, so here we are with the cough or the King of Flavor RDT. I believe that's what it stands for anyway. So then uh, just take that off so we can have a look at what we've got to play with. You get a spare glass, obviously, as well as the RDTA, which we'll look at shortly. Now, if I take that out, you can see that we also do have some spare O-rings and an Allen key and some grub screws in there as well. So that gives us everything we need to look at. Now then, this is the uh, RDTA itself. I think it looks really simple and I actually really really do like it um, now then we've got an air hole either side there and there and we also have underneath we have this air hole coming along the bottom here on both sides and I'll show you what that feeds in a second but uh, but yeah the outside of it not really a whole lot to see to be honest with you you can see through those air holes there um, and then underneath you can see that we are by hop and vape as well as the serial number now then on top we can take the drip tip out which gives us a normal 510 drip tip so you can add your own if you really want to and taking this top barrel section off here you can see that underneath it's reasonably well machined um, there is a little kind of a step whoops dropping it around there is a little step situation going on where the 510 goes because this is quite thin but uh, also I imagine that can help a little bit with regards to some of the uh, the juice that can collect and underneath the top section of a top cap um, and so you're not going to get garbs of juice going up in your mouth hole uh, when you're sucking in so that does help that section I believe as well and then taking that off this is the deck and this is what we've got to uh, to play with and I think we've got some interesting stuff going on here let me see if I can uh, get a little bit closer so we can really check this bad boy out right so there we are with the deck um, and it does look nice and easy because it is it's a joy to use this one to be honest with you um, it's a little bit different because those air holes down at the bottom there actually come up through the center post and uh, will feed air directly underneath the coil now on top of that if we look at the side here where this side air hole is here and here these will actually feed the coil from the sides as well which I think is quite cool so when you pop this top cap on you can actually have that airflow going into the sides. Now you can close that off to some degree by spinning the uh, the top cap there and uh, that will block that off. But it's not the tightest block, but it does do that. Now then, it's single coil already, so you're not going to uh, be wondering how to block off some of that. Um, but uh, what we've got here is this little post section, if we take that out like so, then that becomes your fill port as well as uh, as an airport. Now, one of the challenges or one of the things that I think could have been done a little bit better on this one personally is that this one is obviously this uh, the, the plug is directly next to the positive pin. I would have preferred to have seen this from a safety point of view directly next to the negative pin. Um, but uh, but that's only my own personal opinion. Obviously, if you're going to if you're going to that's upside down if you're going to put this in where uh, um where are we it's not upside down at all i'm lying to you blatantly if you're going to put this in where you can tip this or you can put it to uh to, to an angle where you could come in contact with that positive whilst it's unlikely it's uh I, you know just for an extra point of security i really would like to have seen that uh that just you know next to the negative as opposed to next to the positive but uh but yeah that's all i've got to really worry about when it comes to that to be honest with you um as to how this works, I think it's great in as much as one and a half mil Allen key will get you into these uh, these um, grub screw heads, which I think is a really good size because it allows you to really make a really great purchase on the Allen key to really hammer down into your coils if you so want to, depending on what type of cores you've got. Obviously, once you build, um, then your wick goes down into these really generous holes here. So I've had no problem with three, even three and a half mil coils on the inside of this tank. Now then to separate it from there what you're looking at doing is unscrewing this ring here that comes off 
nice and easily and then the glass just pulls off as so so um, that's about it it's nice and simple it really really is there's nothing to get too excited about there's nothing to get um, kind of it's not difficult to build in any way shape or form because once you've got these um, once you've got these posts if you like open like so get your coil and I've been uh, I've been really enjoying using this um, type of stapled coil once you pop your coil you just get it to roughly where you want it and then it just twists in you can then tighten down your posts get in focus tighten down your posts and away you go what I'm going to do though whilst I have been using this type of uh, of um, um, staple coil to get the best out of it what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to throw a quick little round wire build in here as well so we can really get a sense of uh, what it works like with both and I can give you my honest opinion when we come up top right let's get a coil in so what I've done there is I've just put a 24 gauge stainless steel round wire build in because I wanted to show you that it's really difficult and I hopefully you'll be able to see this um, with this kind of up close section going on here but um, it's quite difficult to get that grub screw to really sit on top of the wire on a round wire build. Now um, it's very very easy especially once you're screwing them down for that wire to just slip out from underneath the grub screw and go in between the screw and the side of the post there because you should be able to see that there's quite a bit of space in there um, now obviously this is no problem when you're using kind of uh, dual core claptons and that sort of stuff because it sandwiches the wire nicely however for using round wire builds and especially if you've uh, if you're going to use 24 gauge or smaller this is a little bit of a pain in the us to uh, to make sure it gets captured correctly anyway what we'll do now is get some wick on here okay so for wick size here you can see what I've done is I've just um, wick that through because it's a three and a half mil ID coil um, I did trim just a tiny amount off the sides of the wicks there um, just so there wasn't too much squashing I've gone just about down in the bottom I might have cut it just a hint too short but uh, but no generally that's how I'm gonna wick this bad boy um, and I've had no problems with this now um, what you got to do then is get your glass on make sure your wick doesn't get caught on that uh, bottom o-ring down the bottom there pop your glass on and then the side much making sure once again that you've got no uh, no cotton on those threads there that can go down like so so we've now got the uh, the top piece on so all we've got le left to do is uh, is juicer up and for that we'll do some uh, some homemade quacks and goose juice and once we've got enough juice on the uh, coil itself, we can use the uh, this dirty great big juice well here, or the hole rather. We fill that up. I know you can't see this filling up, but it fills up pretty quickly because, as you can imagine, there's a lot of space under there. Now, one of the challenges you can face if you do put too much wick underneath here and it's touching both the center post and the side of the glass, um, when you're squirting your juice down, it may not go through to the other side as quickly as you'd like it. So uh, just be aware of that. That may mean that you can you have to move your wick around just a touch. Once you've filled up your juice bunghole like so, then all we've got to worry about is getting the bung back in there. And like I said before, just make sure that that doesn't touch the positive post there at all. Now that should mean that you've got your air hole going directly towards your coil on both sides. Plus it's, it, uh, it's not an overly leaky tank this one, so it does tend to work rather well. But uh, yeah, that being said, the top cap goes back on like so and then the drip tip goes on top of that and there we go that is the cough good to vape let's go up top and have a vape and welcome back so that was the up close with the round wire build in here now then like I said I've just popped this round wire build in and as I showed you in the up close getting it so you can fully capture the wires underneath the grub screws is a little bit of a pain in the ass and I think um, it's the kind of thing that we always used to have I guess but um, 
in today's kind of vaping world, when you've got things like clamps which sandwich wire nice and easily, um, I think that could be a little bit better on here, to be honest with you. I've not had any problems when it comes to clamping down things like dual core uh, Clapton's stapled or fused or anything along those lines because of that extra thickness of wire. But when you've got a single wire build, you do have to make sure you position that wire um, underneath the grub screws. And when you're tightening the grub screws, they don't move the wire out from underneath and in between the screw and the side so make sure that your uh, your coil is in there nice and firm and secure um, before you start firing power into it now the look of the uh, the cough I think is great I think it looks the tits on this uh, on this uh, limelight pylon here because that sort of follows through but let me just pop it onto something else we've got a 24 mil tank here so it's not going to fit on absolutely everything but it will fit on most things now I've got it on a little e petite DNA 60 from uh, from Lost Vape here and I think that does look rather splendid. It does overhang ever such a slight amount because it's 24 as opposed to 22 but uh, I think that looks great doesn't it? Right let's have a little uh, vapey poos shall we? At 44.4 watts the uh, coil is around about 0.5 so I am gonna I'm gonna have it so it's just the bottom airflow that bottom airflow hole is th uh, three millimeter so yeah it's gonna give us a reasonably restricted lung hit. and a reasonably restricted lung hit it is. It's nice and smooth on that power delivery, or that air delivery rather, going up underneath the coil there, which I think is great. Now then, if we open that up, so we have the sides kicking over as well. We do have a lot more air open to us, but uh, we, what it does mean is it is giving us kind of a little bit more volume. It's a little bit louder going on. Um, and, uh, and so based on that, if you're going to be putting a Clapton in or something along those lines, then uh, sure, why not? You know, it's okay because you can bang a bit more power through there. Um, but for a round wire build, personally, I prefer it with just that under coil airflow going on. But uh, but still, nonetheless, uh, let's have a little look. I've just upset my, uh, I've just upset all of my wattage going on there. 44.4 watts. I think you do lose out on a little bit of that flavour once you start introducing that side airflow. Once again, if you do put in some, look how vapey it is in here. Once again, if you do put in some of the, uh, some Claptons or Fuse Claptons rather, um, so you've got a dual core going in there, you can put a bit more heat in there and it does make the flavour a little better. However, when it comes to the flavour of just the single coil, the single round wire build um, with, the, with the air coming up from underneath, 44.4 watts is there is giving me a nice little warm vape um, that is reasonably flavorful reasonably flavorful I've certainly had worse and I believe this is retailing at around about the $35 mark which is in all in all intent and purposes a cheap ass tank it looks great I think it performs reasonably well can be a little bit picky to build on but uh it, like I say, dual core and Clapton's, then it's no problem at all. Um, Flavour-wise, yeah, it's okay. Um, that's about it, I think. I don't think there's a great deal else I can add to it, really. I think it looks great. There you go. I'm just going to repeat myself again if I keep talking. <laughs> shut up, dude. Shut up. Right. That being said, thank you very much for watching. This has been The Cough from Hop and Vape. Certainly worse things to spend your $35 on. And, uh, and there you go. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Have it long.